All right, uh, this circuit I'm going to show here shows uh, some possibilities of using a bifiler coil uh, that uh, I haven't seen it out there. I came up with it a little while back and just brought it up the other day on overunity.com and the inductive kickback thread, and I mentioned it, and then so here we're going to try it. Um, I've already tested it. I know what it's going to do. Um, this is a single winding coil. It has four wires because I designed these coils to do similar tests between them so that if I if I wanted to put the two windings of the bifiler coil in parallel, I could do the same thing over here and then we can have the ohms and then we could do a comparison. Um, the distance between the coil the, the coils is the same. This is going to be our pickup coil for the yellow trace on the scope. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to simulate this circuit. I'm just using a push button switch. We have one volt from the supply that's going to charge up this inductor. So we're going to hold the switch down and then release it. And then the inductive kickback the spike from this coil is going to be sent through this high speed diode to either this single wire coil or this bifiler coil. And there's a switch here to switch to the left to this single wire and to the right for the bifiler coil. Uh, very simple, basic. I just wanted to see what it would do. Um, soon I will be, this is just a push button. So we're going to uh, push, push, uh, just to see what it does. and then. Now that I'm, what I'm seeing, I can make some real switching circuits using transistors and such, uh, and experiment with this further. But, uh, so what we're going to do is basically we built this circuit. Here's my switch, my little uh, kickback inductor. Uh, basically, this is a boost converter circuit where when you close the switch, current flows through, builds up a field in this coil and then when you release the switch that field collapses creates a continued forward current and charges up a capacitor through this diode so we're going to replace the capacitor with these coils now we should all know that a coil this is 35 millihenries and 43 ohms in series uh, this is going to impede the spike. This this is not going to want to take on the spike and create much output magnetically. Um, it's not similar to uh, being open circuit. It's not similar to getting rid of all this and just opening up the switch and then we have our spark that happens across the switch uh, and destroying our switch. Um, but it doesn't take on as much current as the bifiler coil. Tesla says that the unique capacitance features of this coil uh, will take on input voltage limited by only the resistance of the coil and will ignore the impedance of the inductor. And that's basically what it shows here. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to hit this switch. I have an amplifier here that's on and you'll hear and you can see this is the single wire inductor. The blue trace is the, the uh, kicking inductor. We're just putting one volt across it. You can see we're getting up to 220. And if I put this on 50 volts, uh, it gets into the 388, you know, much higher voltages, but I'm going to keep them both on the same voltage. So we can see that that's our inductor. Now if I disconnect this, if I just get rid of this coil altogether. Um, let me see. Um, let me change something here. Trigger. Okay, let's see. Okay. It was triggering off the yellow trace, and if I disconnected this uh, pickup coil, let's see. So you can see that if I take this wire out, now we don't have any of these coils connected, and so 
this is going to produce a spark across the switch that we can't see. But we can see that the spike is very similar in the oscillation of its self oscillation of its coil. But the yellow trace is virtually nil. It's getting something there, but not much. So we'll put this back in. And we have to change this back to channel 1. So now we see that we do have some output from our pickup coil when this inductive spike happens. And the sound that comes out of the stereo is not quite as loud. So this does take on some of the spike, but not so great. It's still very peaky. Um, going up into the 220 volt range at 20 scale 20 volt scale but we do have some output that's my that noise is the switch I'm releasing it quickly in order to just get some sort of accurate disconnect now when we go to the bifire coil we can see that the capacitance of the bifiler coil is definitely taking on the spike and reducing it because the capacitor, just like this circuit up here, uh, if this coil field collapses and dumps its uh, current into this capacitor, naturally the spikes aren't going to be as high as if the capacitor wasn't there. So that's what we get. So on a 20 volt scale, we have about 60 volts, 115 peak to peak on the yellow trace, 120 volts on the blue trace. So, yeah, this is something new and different, and I haven't seen anybody do this. Um, this isn't just... Uh, uh, you know, playing around and seeing, you know, what's the difference between this? Oh, it's just the, uh, this one has a lower resonant frequency because of the capacitance. No, we, we can actually use this as a primary and drive it with a spike of another coil's field collapse and possibly, uh, make a transformer out of this. So this is something new that we could play with, uh, if anybody feels like messing around with this, you're welcome to try it. And that's it. I'm going to show some more stuff here soon on this. This is something that I'm very interested in, and it's got me going. So let's see what happens. Okay, thanks for watching.